We're here at Air Venture Oshkosh. I'm Dan Johnson, and today I'm talking with Richard Owen, and we are looking at something just a little different than what we've looked at before. We've seen some mounts of, of equipment that looks similar to this on other light sport aircraft, and they fly around and take videos. And we looked at some on other light sport aircraft where they shoot pictures of individual areas and then push them all together with technology. Those are both interesting. There seem like different applications. This somehow looks different to me. Richard, what are we looking at here? This is a strut mounted, uh, basically a UAV camera from the military that we've uh, integrated into a package that can fit on the uh, Technam aircraft, specifically the, the Eaglet we've been using. And the ideas you told me about earlier as we visited on this before we got started were that this equipment is available already. You've already had this out in the field. This has right. been, I think you said, combat tested stuff this right. is. Uh, supplying information that helps troops on the ground. Correct. But it's but with the previous applications it's been very expensive and therefore and, and with maybe with some problems or whatever but the point is there's not enough of it to give the guys on the ground the help they need. So what's your objective here with the Technum in this equipment to remedy that problem? We're, we're trying to uh, create a solution that is a a low cost, high quality solution. The, the, the technology is already been developed and, and fielded for the military so the development and, and all the cost has already been pretty much washed out through through government uh, use and we've taken that Which solution. is what your company does and you've already right. figured all we've, this stuff out. Right. Now we, you're just applying it in a new way, is that it? Correct, correct. So so I developed the the uh, uh, the solution and then I was I was asked by a government agency to go contact Technam and and try to partner with them to create a law enforcement airborne platform uh, for surveillance systems and, and uh, providing information to people on the ground uh, that need this support from, from an aerial observation point. Now this can be troops on the ground, military troops on the ground, but you're going to go a little bit beyond that now. You're talking about also law enforcement, civilian kind of Correct. Troops on the ground, if you will. Correct. It's it's been used in by the military primarily, and now through through this project, we are looking at taking it out to state, local, and federal uh, agencies to help them with their their need for technology at a at a price point that they can afford with without sacrificing the quality of. of of uh, the mission package that they need. So we're, we're well aware from reading any newspaper you pick up or any TV show or internet broadcast yeah. that you see that yep. all these communities, be they federal, state, local, all their budgets are pinched. Absolutely. So this is kind of playing right into that. Hey, hey guys, we've got something Absolutely. military grade developed at very high cost, I'm guessing, and but now available to you at much more reasonable cost. Now, you said something earlier that i got to go back to. The military encouraged you to talk to Technum? Uh, a, a government agency. Okay, a government agency. Told me that they, they that we should contact Technum and, and discuss uh, partnering with them since they were already looking at the Technam I see, platform okay. so for So they their knew use. it through their own investigation. Correct. They knew you through your work with the military, and they said, you guys need to get together. Is that it? Yes, exactly. And, and they, they encouraged me to to work with them to create something that they could uh, uh, hopefully endorse and, and push out to their uh, to their uh, uh, officers and, and uh, organizations that they support. Excellent. Well, all this out here is just the working end of the system, but there's a receiving end of the system inside the airplane. Why don't we go inside and have a look? Sounds good. Okay, now we're inside the Technum Eaglet, and uh, the airplane is what we've seen before and done videos on before, but now we're talking about the application of this uh, equipment that's out there on the strut of the airplane and how it sends information to what is, I suppose, a technical flight, a tactical flight officer. I think that's usually the term yeah. that's used for the guy that's over in this okay. seat. So you're flying the airplane, the guy over here, what's going to happen? Is this going to come out? Out and where are you going to mount the equipment you've got in your lap there? Okay, well there are a number of different options. With this particular option we have a, a, a touch screen uh, laptop which would be placed over here on a mount. The, the stick would be taken out, removed, and this would, this would sit something about like that, making sure not to cover the dials. Um, we have a, a wireless joystick and a 
wireless keyboard with mouse to keep uh, things in the cockpit to a minimum as far as cables and, and things of that nature. The okay, system so he would just literally hold this on his lap. He would he, hold that on his lap and it works and it all from here. And does, it, yeah. Absolutely, and then it's also a touch screen. So, for instance, if you wanted the camera to slew to a particular place on the map, so you have a screen with ah, okay. with your That's information on here. Camera. You have a you have a map with the with the angle that you're looking at. Uh, for your target, you also have uh, the, the picture on here as well, so you could touch in, the, in a particular target, and the camera would slew to the target. That's one one command, uh, one type of command for for controlling the camera. Also, you use the joystick uh, with the different buttons to control different features. Um, so that's all handled by a guy who's trained with the equipment and so forth, who's in this seat. He's not correct. doing any of the flying. You got another pilot over here that's just making sure you're going to the location that you need to go to. Right. Your work. That's the and this fella here. Now, if he's sitting here and he wants to look at something over there, do we have to turn the whole airplane, or can that camera actually see uh, a wide range? It, it depends upon how how far over it is and whether it can see uh, through the under the fuselage at the angle that they're they're I mean, flying. You're looking so, down at whatever you're it, looking at. Right. The the ball rotates in a 360 degree uh, 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 circle. So. So depending upon where where the object is, you can certainly see it uh, on a slant angle. So it sounds like we're out here in a military field right now. <laughs> so you're getting the real experience here for us. But. Excellent. How, how long does it take to do an installation like this on an airplane like this? Well, the the mount. Uh, it takes about 10 minutes to install and it was made specifically so that you can take it off and put it on quickly without modification to the aircraft. One of the issues that that uh, we had discussed in the past with, with uh, people who were trying to buy these surveillance systems is that they buy the aircraft, they, they buy the payload, and then they still have to spend money to get it integrated into the aircraft. So with the, with the mount that, uh, uh, that we have, you are able to quickly and easily install it and take it off for storage or switch it to another aircraft so that you can utilize different uh, uh, different aircraft within your inventory as they go to maintenance or switch out or whatever the case might be. That's very um, versatile. That's a nice aspect to it. I'm kind of looking over the cameraman's shoulder here and I can see that it looks like uh, just from what I see out there, that's literally just a few minutes, a couple of bolts and pop yep. the thing off. Uh, uh, and absolutely. all this equipment comes out too, so it does. you do have to run a little bit of line in here. I mean, I see a wire coming down, yep. so you're kind of tucking that yep. in. Are you going in through the wing to do that? The, the, the first installation, and there are a number of different ways to do it, but the, the, the installation originally for a more permanent type of, of uh, platform would be that you put the, the cable through the wing and then you'd uh, zip tie it up or whatever uh, the case might be, put it back on, place. leave the cable ah, okay. in, so and cable stays pop where it is. out. Just take, that, take the hardware abs off. Absolutely. Okay, so that makes so, a lot of sense. So one and, time you got a little bit of maintenance work right, to get all that threaded right. through, yep. but then you just leave that in place. It's got, you yep. can use the airplane yep. for other purposes, and right. it wouldn't hardly get in the way. And then the, and then the other aspect of this was, again, making it simple and, and quick and cost effective, is that we plug it right into the 12-volt uh, uh, yeah, right. You got a uh, cigarette lighter right adapter the, uh, uh, to to power the system. So uh, it's I think a, a well thought out, simple. We tried to make it as simple and as cost effective as possible, yet still provide the capabilities that they were looking for in a, in a system. Now, how is the information stored then, or what is what happens to the information once it's retrieved? Or, uh by the airplane or at the airplane source. You you have the ability to record to the hard drive or you can also do a downlink to the ground and send it down to individuals or or you can even control the, the system from the ground ah, through an okay. uplink. So oh, okay. uh, it, either way. Well I suppose so if you have it on a UAV <laughs> clearly you gotta that's, be able to do that from the ground. That, There's nobody that's in a right. UAV. Exactly right. And okay. the only thing that limits that pretty much is is budget, you know, the the uh, the, the, the choice of, of capabilities can be managed, but the, the budget does come in at some point to limit your, your choice of, of capabilities. Okay, so let's look a little bit now. Uh, we've, we've, you've given us a lot of information here, almost overload. That's good. Uh, we want to provide as much as we can, but there's still a lot more that people want to come and get. Where can they go to find out more about your equipment? We'll, we'll deal with the airplane separately, but just your equipment. For some other manufacturer, some other individual that says, hey, that was pretty interesting stuff, where would they go to get some more info? Well, you could email or, or contact uh, Technam through the Technam, www.technam.net. 
or you could email me at rowen at aditechnologies.com. And uh, your website, aditechnologies.com? Aditechnologies.com. Okay, great. Well, thanks very much for talking to us today. We're going to bring one of the techno folks in to tell us a little bit how this ties in with your airplane. Excellent. Thank you. Excellent. So we've just been talking to uh, uh, Richard from ADI Technologies, and uh, he gave us an explanation of that uh, very interesting system to support both troops on the ground and law enforcement officers and more. But he said something to me that I've got to ask you again. We're talking with Phil Solomon of Technum North America, Heart of Virginia Aviation, and uh, that was that a government office told him that they should seek out Techno. And I thought that was pretty interesting that they already had knowledge of Techno and wanted him to work with you. How did that come about? What other usage did they have that they would have even known about you in the government? Um, the Department of Justice uh, had already used two eaglets for the purposes of um, surveillance over Washington during the Obama inauguration. Um, so um, what they're looking for um, in an aircraft is stability, low operating cost, and of course um, reliability. And Technam, since they've been in business since 1948, um, provide all of those things. So yeah, we're looking forward to a long relationship with um, with Richard and of course obviously the Department of Justice and any of the Homeland Security applications that are out there. So, hoping to sell a lot of Technum airplanes to the military or to the government, at least in some capacity, but also to uh, local and uh, state municipalities that have a need for much lower cost than, say, helicopter equipment, which they've classically used in the past, but with their constricted budgets, uh, you've got something of really uh, useful value to them in a lot of ways. We're familiar with the airplanes, but to give people more information, where can we send them on the web so that the folks watching this on their computers, seeing in YouTube, uh, where do they go on the web to get more information about all the Technum airplanes? We're the Eaglet, but you guys have got about six or seven, eight or ten. I'd lose track now, you've got so many. Uh, where can we go find out? Okay, that's right down. Um, go to www.technam.net. Or if you want to go to the Italian website and learn another language, go to www.technam.com. I've had the pleasure to fly a number of these airplanes. I've reported them on my website and got other news about Technum and other information, plus links to both the websites just seen. That's available on bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com. Thanks so much for watching today.